Hello everyone and welcome to the very first video here at Next Gen Gaming. Next Gen Gaming will be a channel dedicated to Star Wars Unlimited. The type of content that I mainly want to focus on is gameplay content. In each and every gameplay video, I want you to feel like you are watching a live broadcast of a tournament match. I do plan on making some other Star Wars Unlimited content in the future, but for now the focus and priority will be on the gameplay. So without further ado, let's get into the action. Today's feature match is Collins versus Daryl. We've got a showdown of Chirrut versus Aiden. Collins' game plan is going to be heavily focused on Chirrut. Chirrut's going to need to get as big as possible and become a very real threat that stays on the board. Collins will want Chirrut to carry him to victory. On the other side of the board, Daryl is running an Aiden red control deck with a ton of removal. Now we do have the standard 30 HP base for Collins as he is running double blue. And then we've got the 25 HP Tarkin Town base for Daryl. It has an epic action of deal three damage to a damaged non-leader unit. Tons of removal for Daryl. This is going to be a tough matchup, I feel like, for Collins just because there's going to be so much removal that Daryl will have available to him for a real threat like Chirrut. Viper Probe Droid will start us off as Daryl has the initiative. He's able to take a look at Collins' hand, which showed the distant patroller that comes out in response for Collins. Daryl will reclaim the initiative. We also saw System Patrol Craft, the forces with me, as well as Devotion in Collins' hand when Viper Probe Droid took a look. So Daryl with the initiative here on turn two. Colin showing the early way to protect his units with Distant Patroller. A shield on Chirrut is really strong. The only problem is Daryl's running takedown, and that's a, an immediate answer. He's also running Power of the Dark Side, and there is Power of the Dark Side here on turn two to take out the Distant Patroller. Daryl wants no part of the shield that Distant Patroller was going to give to someone when he was defeated. So with nobody else, no other units on the board for Collins, there is no shield given. Collins will play a surgical droid. And unfortunately, Daryl's going to come right back. So Collins plays the droid, and, and then Daryl just removes it quickly with the Viper Probe droid, making sure to keep the board Clear, keep him in check as he knows that Chirrut could be a real problem if he has ways to protect him with shield or heal. And so the initiative over on Colin's side of the table here for turn three, and it looks like he's going to pay four for a system patrol craft. And we'll see how Daryl responds. Viper Probe Droid on the board is going to swing for three damage to Collins' base. And Collins is just going to claim the initiative. And here comes Open Fire. Open Fire will deal four damage and defeat System Patrol Craft. Now there was a play there for Collins that could have kept the Patrol Craft on the board. Chirrut does have the ability, an action ability, that can give a unit plus two health for the phase. So he could have done that, but he did want the initiative. So I can see the argument for not using the ability and just taking the initiative there. Unfortunately, Daryl had the removal. Collins has now deployed Chirrut. It appears as though Daryl has takedown in his hand, but he chooses not to play it right away. Instead, swings in for three damage with Viper Probe Droid to Collins' base, and Collins with a huge response. The Force is with me. On to Chirrut. That is going to give Chirrut two experience tokens, bring his stats to a 5-7. He'll get a shield token and then also be able to attack immediately, and that's going to put five damage on Daryl's base. That could be a huge turning point in this game one as Daryl opted not to play the takedown, which would have immediately defeated Chirrut. 
So Daryl follows up with a Stormtrooper and an Inferno 4. Inferno 4 so good at cycling through the deck, potentially finding answers that you need. But what a huge turn for Collins. And you've got to imagine Daryl right now is frustrated with himself for deciding to attack with Viper Probe Droid instead of immediately defeating Chirrut with that takedown. So Collins has the initiative. We'll see how Daryl can respond to a big momentum swinging turn for Collins. It looks like Collins is going to be playing a card first here with his first action of this turn. And it's going to be Bindu. So Collins plays Bindu, and now he has two very real threats on the board. Bindu has Sentinel, which is just another way to protect Chirrut. Not to mention Chirrut is now out of range for takedown as it has seven health. Takedown can only target a unit that has five HP or less. And Daryl's going to run the Stormtrooper into Bindu. Deal three damage to Bindu, and it looks like Collins will attack with Chirrut, and he is going to base. So five more damage to Daryl's base for a total of ten damage now. Looks like Daryl's wanting to attack with Probe Droid. Wanted to attack and remove the shield on Chirrut, but he cannot attack Chirrut here with Bindu on the board. How does Daryl navigate this situation? A very, very frustrating board presence right now for Collins that Daryl has to deal with. Daryl is going to deploy Ida. Oh, no, wait. Wait, notice the resource count for Daryl. He is only at five resources. He did not resource this turn which means Iden cannot be deployed. You have to control at least six resources to deploy Iden. So instead, he's going to use the takedown on Bindu. But things kind of falling apart here in the middle of this game one for Daryl. No takedown on Chirrut and then not being able to deploy Iden this turn certainly hurts. Now back over to Daryl. It looks like he is going to go ahead and remove the shield token on Chirrut. And that will destroy or defeat the Viper Probe Droid. And then Inferno 4 will go in for 2 damage to Collins' base. 8 damage on now. And then Daryl will use the action ability on Iden to heal 1 damage from the base. So nine damage on Daryl's base, eight on Collins' base. We've got Collins with the initiative again here. We will see if Daryl can recover after these last couple of turns that have really put him on the back foot here. He does resource this turn, so... Deploying Iden is in play here. For Collins, you just have to keep up the pressure. And he's going to immediately play Bayes Malbus, and that's a big play because notice that Daryl has power of the dark side in his hand. Had Collins not played a unit there, Daryl could have defeated Chirrut. So great play for Collins getting another unit on the board to protect himself from power of the dark side. And that's exactly what Daryl wanted to play. The power of the dark side would have been huge. 
had Collins potentially just swung in with Chirrut or maybe maybe buffed him even more first. So Darrell will deploy Iden, and then Collins will make Chirrut bigger, putting a devotion on Chirrut now. That's going to give him an extra plus one, plus one, and also give Chirrut restore two. And there is the power of the dark side, and Collins has to destroy Bays here. No question. And Collins will go ahead and swing into Daryl's base for a total of six damage. We'll put Daryl up to 14 damage on his base. He did get to heal one off of Iden's ability when Baze was destroyed. But Collins still in the driver's seat of this game one. And it looks like Iden is going to attack, attacking Chirrut. It looks like Daryl has another takedown in hand, a Count Dooku, so he is trying to get Chirrut in range here. I believe Chirrut has eight health at this point. Daryl's trying to get him in range to be able to use the Count Dooku or takedown and get Chirrut off the board. Chirrut has been a menace over the last few turns. So Collins has reclaimed the initiative. Inferno 4 will go in for two more damage, putting Collins back to eight after the restore two from Chirrut's attack earlier in the turn. And look at what Collins has in his hand. He's got a Forces With Me. And that Forces With Me, I'm pretty sure, would take Chirrut right back out of range to be destroyed by Takedown or Count Dooku. Collins with the initiative here. It looks like that is exactly what he's going to do. That's another huge play. The Force has certainly been with Chirrut in this first game. He'll get an additional plus two, plus two, a shield, and he's going to go into, I'm assuming, Daryl's base here for eight. Right, He's got eight power now. Another big play for Collins. That's going to put 22 damage on Daryl's base, and that play means that Takedown or Count Dooku will not be able to defeat Chirrut. Chirrut has six remaining health, and that is just enough to dodge Daryl's answers here. One more hit from Chirrut would be game for Collins. We'll see if Daryl has any response here. And I think that's going to do it. He's going to scoop up here in this first game. Collins claims game one with a massive cheer it. Cheer it does exactly what he needed him to do. And now Collins with a 1-0 lead heading into game two. We are set for game number two. In that first game, two critical plays for Daryl that really changed the outcome of that match. He did not play takedown immediately on Chirrut and then did not resource on turn five, meaning that he was unable to deploy Iden on turn five and had to wait one extra turn, and that put him very behind as well. So... In this game, Daryl's going to have to make sure that he is immediately ready to answer cheer it. Try to keep early control of the board again as best as he can. He did a great job of that in the first game. Let's see if he can have the same kind of success here. Inferno 4 down on the board first for Daryl, and then it's Guardian of the Wills 
for Collins. Daryl will retain the initiative. Keep an eye on takedown. I don't think Daryl is holding takedown at the moment. Takedown is going to be such a big card in this match. Make an opening coming down on Guardian of the Wills. Going to give Guardian of the Wills minus two, minus two, which will be enough to defeat it. And then Collins will follow up with another Guardian of the Wheels right away. Inferno 4 comes across for two damage onto Collins' base. Nothing. Make my Guardian of the Wills resilient. Collins is going to buff up the Guardian of the Wills a little bit. So Guardian of the Wills now has five health. The only problem early for Collins here as he's down to just two cards in hand. So card advantage certainly in Daryl's favor here early in the game. Daryl with the initiative. See what he decides to play. And it's going to be a power of the dark side to take out the Guardian. Once again, just wanting to keep control of the board early. But Collins does respond with a system patrol craft and with just one resource open. Not sure Daryl will have a way to remove that this phase. We do see regional governor in Daryl's hand. That card could... Certainly make a splash in this game, maybe calling something like the forces with me. And Daryl's just going to pay one for the Death Star Stormtrooper. And Collins will claim the initiative. So this is... A potential turning point in this game here on turn four. Collins will have the option to deploy Chirrut. We'll see how Daryl responds on this turn. So first action for Collins. He swings with system patrol craft three damage into Daryl's base. And then it's going to be an open fire to take out the system patrol craft. And it looks as though Daryl is still back one resource. He's still behind one resource. He only has four resources right now. Here comes Chirrut with only one resource available to Daryl. I don't think he's going to be able to answer it this turn. So Daryl swings Death Star Stormtrooper into Chirrut, putting three damage on Chirrut. And Collins will put a devotion onto Chirrut, seeing only one resource available to Daryl. No units left in the ground arena to fight for Daryl, so... An opening here for Collins. And wait a second. We've got Daryl. Looks like he he's going to use the epic action on Tarkintown. He used the epic action on Tarkintown to put three more damage on Chirrut. But you can only deal three damage to a damage non-leader unit. And neither player has caught that. Oh, no. War crimes have been committed. Collins does swing for four damage onto Daryl's base, but, oh, no, this is a bad look on the Inferno 4, and Chirrut has been defeated. But you cannot use the Tarkintown epic action on leaders, but neither player realizes that, and that is a huge pivotal moment here in Game 2.
Daryl does have the initiative. And he does get the five resources, but once again, he is a resource behind, so he cannot deploy Iden on this turn. So he will start out by simply attacking for two damage with Inferno 4. And then it is Obi-Wan Kenobi coming down for Collins. This is tough because I can't see everything in Daryl's hand, but not sure he would have had the the answer that he needed when he needed it for Chirrut. If Chirrut was still on the board, and he should be. Daryl's action, he's going to play regional governor here. And Daryl has named... Jedi lightsaber with regional governor, and I don't think that's a bad call one bit, especially considering you've got Obi-Wan Kenobi on the board. So as long as regional governor is in play, Collins will be unable to play Jedi lightsaber. And Collins will just claim the initiative, and then Daryl will put another unit down on the board. It is cell block guard. 3-3 three, three, Sentinel. It will be Collins' action to take first here. He has the initiative. And if you're Collins now without Chirrut, he's just going to have to try and load the board with as many threats as possible. Knowing the amount of removal that Daryl has, you need to load the board with threats and get in for damage as quickly as you can. The problem is he is facing down a Sentinel. So Obi-Wan Kenobi is unable to go into the base here. And Daryl, another removal card, takedown, and he's going to take down Baze. He has to be a bit damaged. And Collins down to... Two cards in hand, Obi-Wan Kenobi on the board. He's going to play a Distant Patroller. Distant Patroller certainly could play a role here. That is a unit that can give Obi-Wan a shield. And now Iden is deployed for Daryl. Collins going to immediately respond with Resilient giving Obi-Wan Kenobi an extra three health. But that is it for Collins' hand. He has no cards left in hand. So with Daryl's next action, he's going to attack with Inferno 4, two damage onto the base. And then Collins going to use the action ability here to Give two additional health to Obi-Wan Kenobi for this phase. Making sure that Obi-Wan Kenobi stays around beyond this turn. That's the goal here. Auden's going to deal four damage to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi will take out the cell block guard, but now seven damage on to Obi-Wan. Daryl with the initiative. Seven damage on Daryl's base, just four on Collins. But Daryl is definitely in the driver's seat right now here in game two. After the absolute war crime that was committed against Chirrut, Daryl plays Force Choke onto Obi Wan Kenobi. That will defeat Obi Wan Kenobi. Now, Obi Wan does have the win defeated trigger that would allow Collins to put two experience tokens onto Distant Patroller. 
And it doesn't look like he's going to do that. So unfortunately, it looks like a missed trigger here. The distant patroller not getting the experience tokens. Now Collins did get an extra card off of Force Choke, and he's going to play Kanan Jarrus. And Daryl with an immediate response to Kanan as well. Another takedown. You can see the frustration starting to build here for Collins as everything that he plays is immediately defeated. So Collins does put Yoda onto the board. And Daryl taking a couple damage off the base. The triggers from Iden. When an enemy unit is defeated, Daryl gets to heal one from his base. And then Daryl just attacks Yoda with Iden. So now Yoda has been defeated as well. And once again, the win defeated trigger. Collins does not take advantage of it. So that would have given him an extra card. Daryl has to be liking the way this is looking at this point in game two. He's got control of the board. Only six damage on his base. He has to like his chances to force a game three. So Daryl with the initiative is going to immediately defeat the distant patroller with Inferno 4, not allowing a shield token on Collins' side of the board. And then Collins will put down another ground unit, Rugged Survivors. Daryl is just in a position where he is just controlling everything that Collins does right now. Every unit that is coming into play is almost immediately being defeated. And Daryl's going to pay five to play Gideon Hask. So it looks like Collins will be able to keep a unit on the board for now. And he's going to pay one to put Protector onto Rugged Survivors. That's going to give Rugged Survivors Sentinel and plus one, plus one. So it's going to bring Rugged Survivors stats up to four, six currently. Daryl has just claimed the initiative. And then Collins puts down a surgical droid. But Collins, unfortunately, at this point, is drawing off the top. Daryl will have the first move. Does he choose to attack first here? Or does he play something? He does have Gideon Hask on the board, which is going to buff somebody. right? It's going to buff one of his units. Give one of his units an experience token each time an enemy unit is defeated. So he could go in, take out the surgical droid. That's exactly what he's going to do. Oh, nope, He's, he can't do that. Sentinel. I even forgot. Daryl forgot. I forgot. Rugged Survivors has Sentinel currently. So Daryl's going to play make an opening onto Rugged Survivors. That will give Rugged Survivors minus two, minus two for this phase. And Daryl's going to heal a couple more damage. Just three damage on his base now. So Rugged Survivors 
currently just a 2-4 for the remainder of this turn. And Collins is going to play a cargo juggernaut, which is shielded, and it is going to heal four damage from his base because he does control another blue unit. And now Gideon Hask is going to have enough power to defeat Rugged Survivors after the make an opening play. Gideon Hask will attack Rugged Survivors, only take two damage back. And he will give an experience token to Gideon Hask. So Hask is now a 6-6 six, six with four health remaining. Collins has put another surgical droid on the board. Still several options now for Daryl. He has three open resources. He still has three units that can attack. He's probably going to take out one of the, the droids here. Now that the Sentinel is gone, Rugged Survivors was defeated. No more Sentinel on the board for Collins, so... Iden will take out the surgical droid. Heal another damage from Daryl's base. And Inferno 4 will swing in for two. And then an extra damage onto Collins' base from the regional governor. We are about 18 minutes into this game, and there's only a combined total of four damage on the bases. So this has been a long, grindy game thus far. And currently, Daryl in complete control of this game. He's got great presence on the board. He still has a very large Hask ready. And it appears as though he has some more removal options in hand. Collins, with the initiative here, will be able to take the first action of this phase. Collins knows that Gideon Hask is a problem. And it looks like the cargo juggernaut is going to attack Gideon Hask here. So that'll put four damage on to Gideon. Which means he's going to have just one health remaining. Well, Collins is trying to play it in a way where the surgical droid could take out Gideon. And it looks like Daryl had has played right into his hands here. Gideon Hask is going to go into base for seven. And then the surgical droid is going to finish off Gideon Hask. There's certainly an argument there for Daryl to use potentially another option, whether attacking into the surgical droid or playing a removal option to protect Hask this turn and keep him on the board. So Snowtrooper Lieutenant comes down, gives Iden plus two attack, and that's going to allow Iden to trade with the jar excuse me, the cargo juggernaut. And now Collins back to square one. Nothing on the board, only two cards in hand. And he's already claimed the initiative, so Daryl is able to load up the board. He plays the Viper Probe Droid, seeing that Collins just does not really have an answer for what he's doing at this moment. And then a Death Trooper as well onto the board for Daryl. And two more damage to the base. That'll put 12 damage total on Collins' base here. It looks like he did find a Bindu off the top. That could potentially slow Daryl down just a little bit. 
And that's what he's going to do. Bindu comes down for Collins. Daryl still has at least four cards in hand. He has complete control of the board and card advantage here. And he has no damage on his base with all of the healing that Aiden has done in this game. So the Viper Probe Droid will put three damage onto Bindu. And then Collins will play Moment of Peace to give Bindu a shield token, trying to protect him. But Count Dooku is going to come down onto the board, and that is going to defeat Bindu because he only had four health remaining. And Dooku destroys or defeats a unit with four or less remaining HP when he has played. So now it is go time for Daryl. As the board is wide open, he attacks with everything he has there, putting Collins to 20 damage on the base. Ten more damage for Daryl will put us into a game three situation. And Collins with a last-ditch effort here. He's going to play Vanquish on to Dooku. Does Daryl have enough damage on the board here? It looks like he has six damage on the ground, two in space. Well, that should do it with the Snowtrooper Lieutenant. I believe that will give Daryl enough damage here on this turn to finish the game, unless Collins has one more answer in hand. He only has two available resources. Just don't see a way out for Collins here. Definitely looks like we are going to play another game in this match. And that is going to do it. Daryl will take game two, but not without controversy. Tarkin Town's epic action being used to destroy Chirrut, which is something you cannot do, and neither player realized it. That was such a defining moment here in Game 2. Before we get started with Game 3, I would like to give a shout-out to Game Castle, the local game store in Taylor, South Carolina, where this tournament match was filmed. They have been overwhelmingly supportive of this wonderful new game. Ever since Star Wars Unlimited launched back on March 8th, we have had multiple weekly tournaments at Game Castle. So again, thank you guys so much for all the support. If you're ever visiting the upstate area here in South Carolina, make sure to check out Game Castle for all of your gaming needs. We are ready to go for the final game of this feature match. Collins and Darrell, 1-1. We saw in game one two critical plays that really decided the outcome of game one and then in game two the unfathomable war crime that was committed that really seemed to change the complexity and how game two played out what will game three have in store for us collins has the initiative but it looks like he is passing over to daryl he may not have a turn one play here yeah i do not think he does No turn one play for Collins. And Daryl will put down Viper Probe Droid. So we'll get to look at Collins' hand. We see a Resilient, a Yoda, and two copies of the Forces with me. If you're Collins, you don't really love to see no turn one play, but Yoda on turn two followed up with the Forces with me and then into Cheer It. And another force is with me is not a bad line. But we know that Daryl has a plethora of removal. And it's going to be tough to follow that line and allow, or, or for that line to stick, right? So turn two for Collins. Yoda is going to hit the board right away. And Daryl with Snow Trooper Lieutenant, plus two attack. That is going to allow the droid to trade with Yoda. And you could see the frustration. 
there. Collins just cannot keep a unit on the board. And then I think Collins missed the win defeated trigger there. I do not think he drew an extra card when Yoda was defeated. That would have been an option for Collins. And Daryl has now loaded up the ground arena as he put down the Stormtrooper as well. Collins on turn three starts things out with a system patrol craft. And then Daryl plays a regional governor calling the forces with me after seeing the hand with Viper probe droid, seeing the two copies of the forces with me. That is a huge play for Daryl. Making essentially, at the time being, two cards in Collins' hand completely dead. So Collins claimed the initiative. And that leaves the door open for Daryl to attack for five with Snowtrooper Lieutenant and the Stormtrooper. So Collins will once again start us out. System patrol craft in play for Collins, but again, the forces with me turned off currently because of the regional governor. He cannot play the forces with me. He's just going to swing for three to start things off in this phase. Three damage onto Daryl's base. Daryl's going to pay three. Power of the dark side is going to once again remove Collins' board. As he did not have a choice, he had to play, or excuse me, he had to defeat the system patrol craft. Oh no, and it's another immediate answer for Daryl. A force choke comes down and that deals the five damage needed to defeat Kane and Jarrus. And once again, Colin, Collins has nothing left on the board. Now he brings out Chirrut. And there's enough damage being shown on the board in the ground arena for Daryl that he could take out Chirrut here. We'll see what Daryl decides to do. But we do remember that Collins did show a resilient in his hand earlier. And I think it's still in his hand now. So that would be a big potential play. To buff up Chirrut. So Regional Governor has attacked Collins' base for one, putting him up to six damage. And now Chirrut, Collins has Chirrut attack the Regional Governor. But it's not enough to defeat the Governor. The Governor still needs to take one more damage to be defeated. Daryl's going to attack into... Cheer it with Stormtrooper, so should be four damage on to cheer it now, I believe. But cheer it does currently have eight total health, so that should leave four left. So four damage would still be needed to defeat cheer it here at the end of this phase. So Daryl's going to attack cheer it for two. That's going to put six damage on, just two health remaining. And oh no, it's happened again. Daryl uses the epic action on Tarkintown to defeat Chirrut. And it looks like once again, neither player realizes that you cannot use Tarkintown on a leader unit. Well, most certainly, the Imperial Commanders will be informed of this, but unfortunately... With the history of the Empire, I'm not sure any mercy will be shown. Another war crime here in Game 3. And Collins has to start back from square one with nothing on the board. So with the initiative, Collins will play out a cargo juggernaut. But with no other blue unit on the board, he will not get to heal four from his base. It does put a unit in play, though, to create some board presence. Daryl currently just with the one unit in play, the regional governor. 
But now Daryl will deploy Iden, who can certainly make an impact here. Daryl still has two cards in hand. He's got Palpatine and Viper Probe Droid. Collins has claimed the initiative, so the play is on Daryl here. He's got two units that he could potentially attack with. We know he still has the droid in his hand that he could play. Looks like he's going to attack Iden into Juggernaut, and that will remove both of the shields. And then here comes the Viper Probe Droid, and it's going to show the two forces with me again. So Collins has kept the forces with me, really looking to get Governor off the board so that he can take advantage of the force. So Collins will have the first action here. He's got to get the governor off the board. He does have the juggernaut in play, so he could just attack straight into the regional governor if he wanted to. And the juggernaut would have plenty of power to defeat the governor. So Collins was taking a little time deciding what to resource, and that is exactly what he's going to do. Juggernaut is going to take the governor off the board, and that is going to allow Collins the ability to play the forces with me. Oh, no, and in response, Daryl, the power of the dark side, not going to let forces with me target the juggernaut. And Collins back to no board again. That has been the story for Collins over the last couple games. So now Collins has put a system patrol craft into play. Daryl does remember to take the one damage off his base from the heal that Iden allows him. And then Daryl just attacks Collins' base with both Iden and Viper Probe Droid. So Collins up to 13 damage now. Just two damage on Daryl's base, but Collins does have the initiative. One thing we know for sure is Daryl has the Palpatine in hand, which could literally send Collins back to no units on the board yet again. Collins desperately needs to build a board presence back up. And if you're Collins, you have to hope that Daryl has run out of removal, but we know that's not the case. And Collins is just going to swing with the system patrol craft three damage into Daryl's base. That's five damage on now. And Daryl's going to go four to base with Iden. So Collins up to 17 damage on his base now. And he will respond with rugged survivors into the ground arena. Daryl's next action. Here is Palpatine. Palpatine's going to deal six damage divided as Daryl chooses. He's going to deal five to rugged survivors. And then one damage to system patrol craft. And once again, Collins' request to build up some board presence has been denied by Daryl this time with Palpatine. So Collins does play repair. Heals three damage from his base. So he's back down to 14 damage on. The only problem with that play is now Daryl has the initiative. I'm not sure at this stage if it makes a huge difference. We don't see a lot of removal in Collins' hands. I think he did pick up a Vigilant. So to start the turn, Daryl's going to open fire the system patrol craft. 
And Collins, you've guessed it, has no units on the board once again. And it looks like Collins is going to opt to play the Vigilance, defeating the Viper Probe Droid. And he's going to heal five damage from his base. So that'll put Collins back down to nine damage on the base. But the problem now for Collins is he is still facing down Palpatine and Iden. And here comes the Snow Trooper Lieutenant. He's going to give two additional attack to Palpatine. And Palpatine's going to smack Collins' base for eight damage here. That's going to put Collins to 17 on and then add another four from an attack with Iden. 21 damage now on Collins' base. Does he have an answer to the all-out assault that is taking place in the ground arena right now? Collins with the initiative. He'll start with Distant Patroller. I do not think he has any answers. No removal in hand for Collins. And that means that Daryl should be able to take the game on this turn as he is showing 12 damage in the ground arena. So the move is on Daryl now. And he's going to go six to base with Palpatine. That's going to put Collins up to 27 damage on his base. One last action potentially here for Collins. And it is a Guardian of the Wills, which unfortunately will not do anything to stop Daryl. All Daryl has to do here is swing in with Iden, and that would finish this match. Looks like Daryl's going to play something here. And there it is. Yeah, Collins pointed out now I'm at 27. Just have to swing with Iden, and that is going to do it. So Daryl will attack with Iden, and that will do the final amount of damage needed to give Daryl the win here in game three. Daryl takes the match two to one, but it was certainly not without controversy. And I hope we all learned a very valuable lesson here today that will help us keep leaders everywhere safe. You cannot target leaders with Tarkin Town. But for now, let's ramp up the volume at the table for the quote of the match. And your whole thing is you want to move these big, like, big guys, and then my <laughs> deck is like, let's take those big guys out. Really A big thank you to everyone for joining me here today. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your feedback and comments down below. May the force be with you, and until next time, take care.